Lookout Pro includes a highly accurate monoscopic photogrammetry subsystem that allows you to precisely measure things like the heights of attachments on the pole, uh, conductor diameters, lead lengths of guy anchors, and so on. And we've seen in other videos how you actually perform that task. In this video, what we're going to talk about is how do you add a new camera to the list to the database of the calibrated cameras that are used for performing that task. Um, in order to really accurately measure something from a photograph, you have to have a precise model of the lens of the camera that you are going to use. If you don't do that, and there are other systems that work this way, if you just linearly interpolate the image, you get something that's, you know, plus or minus a couple of feet in accuracy, but you certainly don't get the centimeter level accuracy that you can get with a true photogrammetric subsystem like the one in OCAL Pro. So let's take a look at what's involved in adding a new camera that I don't currently have in the database to the system. Um, I go under Tools, Miscellaneous, Photo Measurement, and I say I want to perform a lens calibration task. Now the first thing you're going to see is a little tool that pops up like this and this is a multi-step process but the very first thing you need is a chart a calibrated chart of targets which you're going to photograph with the camera that you're inter interested in calibrating so on step one of this tool we see click here to print the calibration chart I do that it pops up and says what, can, what printer do I want to use and I go ahead and print that out and off it goes and now Unfortunately, it's going to be a little difficult for me to show you the next step, but I'm going to show you the result. What you need to do is go take the target that you just printed out and very carefully photograph it as perpendicular to the target and as full frame as you can uh, with the camera in question. So I'm going to do that, and then we're going to come back and take a look at them, and I'll do it wrong and just on a couple of them so you can see what both the right way and the wrong way looks like. So we're back. I've taken some photographs of the target as it was printed. And let's take a look at what you really need this target to look like. So you want the picture to fill the frame as much as possible. So here's an example where um, A, I've taken the photograph obliquely, and B, it doesn't really fill the frame. So that wouldn't be a suitable one. Also, you want it to be as straight as possible, so you wouldn't want to crook it. Now, these are obviously examples where I've overdone it just a bit. But here's a here's a picture where I've photographed the target. It's relatively straight in the frame. It fills the frame. Um, it's not taken at an oblique angle. If I wanted to do this even more accurately, I might consider taping the, the piece of paper down to the table. But this is actually pretty close to what we need. So let's go ahead and we're going to select that one. So that's uh, image 5. So, we'll go to step two, and that's it, it tells you what to do. We go to step three, and now we're going to select the image. So we browse, and I happen to know that was on E, E sim. I mean, it was number five. That's the one that was good. It loads that image up, and now we go to the step where what it does is it reads the EXIF tag. It tells me the camera is a Ricoh camera. It's a WG5 GPS. And it tells me it's a 16 by 9 uh, ratio camera. Um, but what it doesn't tell me is what's the lens distortion. This is the number that we really care about. And so what we go is we say where it says click here to select points. And a little target selecting window pops up. Now you can zoom in and out by using the wheel exactly as you can in the 3D view in OCalc, and you can pan around by pr pressing and holding on the right mouse button and moving your mouse. And what you want to do is, starting with the upper left hand most target, very carefully and accurately click right in the middle of each of these X's. And the more accurately and carefully you do this, the better the uh, image photo measurement results will be using this camera going forward. So. You see what I'm doing is I'm working my way around the image. Oops. Now, actually, I just screwed up by clicking the left mouse button instead of the right. That was probably fortuitous because I have an undo button. If I screw up like that, rather than having to start again from scratch, I just say undo. And now I can go ahead and keep working around and being quite careful to go right in the middle. And you want to actually sort of do this even sub-pixel if you can. Get right in there and click that center point 
and you keep working around, keep working around. Now, because this is a little bit time consuming, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video while I continue all the way around the outside row. And after that brief pause, we've reached the point where I've worked my way out, starting in the upper left hand corner all the way around the image and back again. Now we're going to do the inside set of six targets. So, again, starting with the upper left hand most one, moving in a clockwise direction, I move through these six targets. Actually, I didn't do a very good job on that one. That would make a difference, so I'm going to do it again. I get right in the middle as much as you can. And now we've selected all the targets. So we click Done. That indicates that we're done picking the targets. Now, I have to remember to click the Perform Calibration tab, because I can go back and refine the points if I wanted to, but it isn't. It isn't going to magically somehow know that I'm done picking, so I have to remember, and this is a step that sometimes messes people up, click here to calibrate, I click the perform calibration button, and here what it, you see it does, it says calibration complete, and it tells me what the distortion was. And this number represents the flatness, if you will, of this lens stack on this particular make and model of camera. So I agree, okay to accept that. What that's telling me is the relationship of the number of pixels per inch, or the number of inches per pixel, if you want to look at it that way, at the edge of the field, of the pixel field, as opposed to in the center. And we've all seen fisheye lenses where there's a lot of distortion at the edge, in which case this number would be quite high, or relatively flat lenses, such as the one we have here, where this number is relatively low. There isn't a huge, a huge dis amount of distortion in the Ricoh branded lens stacks. Uh, there's ice lenses and that happens to be why we use them. We like them a lot and I can recommend them. Now I have to remember to tell it to update the camera. It isn't going to do it. If I click that I'm finished and I didn't save it, I got to go through those, all this again. So don't forget. Click update camera file. It says the camera Ricoh imaging WG G5 GPS has been added to the supported cameras database. Okay, all's right with the world. Now I click finished and if I go to help folders, cameras and CBT, supported cameras, oop, how about I go supported cameras, you'll actually see that the, uh, where's the Rico? The Rico WG5 camera has in fact been added. You can see I just added it today. And it's just a little XML file. If you look at it, you can see what's in there. It's pretty straightforward. But now we're all set. Every time we um, load an image in OCAL Pro, it comes to this folder. It looks at the available files. It collates them into a database and says, oh, I can tell by the XML tag of that camera that that's one of the ones I know what to do with. And, and it just goes ahead and performs the lens calibration for, me, for you. So that's what's involved in adding a camera uh, to perform precise photogrammetric measurements. It's pretty straightforward. And if you have a camera that you already like to use in-house, um, you know, you can go and do it. Now, the one caveat to this that I should warn you about is that some cameras, specifically cameras found on cell phones and cameras found on inexpensive tablets, Android cell phones do this a lot, the EXIF data identifying the make and model of the camera is in fact not there, so that OCAL can't really figure out what to do with those cameras. And in that case what it does is it just applies a flat lens model and does the best it can, but you'll get a warning that says it doesn't understand the EXIF make and model of that camera.